there, and welcome to today's lesson. So today we are going to learn all about the unit circle. And in order to do so, we're going to need to review some of our knowledge about trigonometric functions. Okay, so remember SOHCAHTOA from earlier this year. SOHCAHTOA means that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. We've got our sine opposite over hypotenuse, our SOH. So that would be on this particular triangle, we've got our sine of theta, here's our theta. The side opposite is going to be the side that does not touch that angle, so this would be y and then divided by our hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that will be x divided by h, whatever those values are. Tangent opposite over adjacent, so y divided by x. Now we're gonna learn three new trig functions, but they're not really new, they're actually just reciprocals. So our first one is cosecant. Cosecant is just like sine, except it's flipped. So cosecant actually equals one over sine. If you take opposite over hypotenuse and flip it, that's what you're gonna get here. Our next one is secant. Secant is the reciprocal of, adjacent, or of cosine. So if we were to take our cosine and flip that ratio, you're gonna get secant theta. And lastly, cotangent of theta. So cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent of theta. So instead of opposite over adjacent for tangent, our cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So I went ahead and cleared that off. But basically, with our new trig functions here, these are just gonna be reciprocals. And if you notice, cosecant goes with sine. So sine did not have a co in front of it, its reciprocal does. Whereas cosine has the co in front of it, its reciprocal does not have the co. So just remember that, that sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. Cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. Okay, let's move on. We're now going to go into our special right triangle. So you know these as well, this is not new. But we're going to look at them in a little slightly different way. So here we've got a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Our angle measure right here is 30 degrees. So therefore, if this hypotenuse equals one, we know that this is gonna be half of your hypotenuse because this equals one half of this or our hypotenuse is two X. So if this were to be X, this would be two X. And remember our ratio here is X times the square root of three. And if we multiply square root of three times one half, we get root three over two. So we've got this right triangle. What happens, and I'm gonna go ahead and clear all of that off here. What happens when I put this on a coordinate grid? So we're gonna have our reference angle start at the origin. And what I mean by the reference angle is this angle right here. So 30 degrees is coming out of the origin. So we can have this triangle in the first quadrant or we can flip it and put it in the second quadrant. Notice what happens here though. This is gonna become negative. So when we're finding our trig values of these, if we do sine of this angle, this is still a 30 degree triangle. However, this would be, how far have we gone here? It would be 150 degrees. So sine of 150 degrees is gonna still be one half opposite over your hypotenuse, which is one. So sine of 150 is just one half, but cosine is going to change signs here because this is a negative three, root three over two. So cosine of 150 degrees would be negative root three over two divided by your hypotenuse, which is one. So negative root three over two. We can take this one step further and put it in the third quadrant. So we still have a 30 degree triangle here, but now our angle, I'm gonna clear that off, our angle here to get to this line right here would be 180 degrees plus 30. And our trig values would change as well. So before our sign was positive because we were in the second quadrant here and we went up, 
our height was up, but here our height is down, so sine would now become negative. And then lastly, we can put one in the fourth quadrant. So you can have all of these types of triangles in every single quadrant. And this is just the 30, 60, 90 triangle. We could do the same thing with the 45, 45, 90 triangle, and I'm not going to show it on this chart. But remember, that's what our basic triangle looks like. We're going to keep our hypotenuse 1, and the reason for that is because we're going to put these in our unit circle, and the unit circle means one unit, so our hypotenuse will be 1. But we can have our 45, 45, 90 triangle placed in all four quadrants, and a 60, 30, 90 triangle. Now, a 60, 30, 90 triangle is the same thing as a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's just that your reference angle here coming out of the origin is going to be 60 degrees. So instead of this being 30 and this 60, so remember our 60 would have been here, you're going to have the 60 degrees coming out of here. So this will be 60 degrees, and this will be 30 up here. Okay, so I know that's a lot of kind of random information there, but I just wanted to go over the ratios and the special right triangles. So now we're going to take this all and put this in the unit circle. I've been talking a lot about the unit circle. What is it? Okay, here we go. So we have a unit circle here. We are going to find common trig values based on our 30, 60, 90 triangles, our 45, 45, 90 triangles, things like that but for the entire coordinate system. So first, we've got a 30 degree triangle. We just saw that on the previous one. So we can find our values, our sine, our cosine, our tangent, our cosecant, our secant, and our cotangent based on the information of this circle. And you're going to have every single hypotenuse in this circle will have a hypotenuse of 1 because we're creating a circle with a radius of 1 here. So every hypotenuse here is 1. Okay, so there's our 30 degree. That's the point that it'll be there. 45 degrees is going to occur in the first quadrant. It's a little bit above. 60 degrees. Then we move on to 90 degrees. Now we're going to move into the second quadrant. So our first triangle that we're going to see is a 60 degree triangle. However, this angle measure right here to get to that spot is not 60 degrees. It's 120 degrees, right? Because you would have taken 180, we know that this is 180, minus 60 gets us 120. So our reference angle will be 60 degrees when we're figuring out our trig values, but our theta is going to be 120 degrees. Okay, next triangle is going to be a 45 degree triangle in the second quadrant. So this has a value of 135 degrees. So theta equals 135 degrees here. Because remember, this is the amount that we're going from our starting point, which is always the positive x-axis. Now we can go on to the next one, which will be a 30 degree triangle from our x-axis. So you're noticing these angles here are how far they are from the x-axis, in this case the negative x-axis. Our angle is going to be the angle measure right here. So this is 150 degrees for theta. Our next angle, 180 degrees. That's just a straight line. Now we're moving on to the third quadrant. So we have a 30 degree triangle in the third quadrant. That's going to give us an angle of 210 degrees that we've gone from our starting point here. So this right here would be 210 degrees to get there. We have a 45 degree triangle. That's 235 degrees around. And we have a 60 degree triangle, which is 240 degrees around. Then we have the quadrant angle of 270 degrees. And then moving on to the fourth quadrant, 60 degrees, which will give us 300 degrees around. 45 degree triangle in the fourth quadrant is going to be 315 degrees. And a 30 degree triangle in the fourth quadrant 
will be 330 degrees. Okay, so those are where all of your different angles measure up. The common trig angles that we're going to be using and common right triangles that we use here. So these are all measuring up. Now if you notice, I have them in different colors here. That's because I've color coded them. So all of the green numbers here, those are your 30 degree triangles. It just is a matter of it's a 30 degree triangle in the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, or fourth quadrant. The reddish kind of angles right here, these are all of your 45 degree triangles. So this is 45 degree measure. This will be 45 degrees in the second quadrant, 45 degrees in the third quadrant, and 45 degrees in the fourth quadrant. And same thing here, the 60 ones. So we see the degree measure. Now we're going to affiliate that with radian measures, because remember, we can go back and forth. OK, so first things first. You're going to notice a commonality here. All of your 30 degree triangles are going to have the lowest denominator as a 6. So if it's a 30 degree triangle, the radians are going to have something over 6. So we have pi over 6 here. If it's a 45 degree triangle, it's going to be over 4. And these are reduced fractions, so that means that they are simplified to their simplest forms. If it's a 60 degree triangle, it's going to be over 3. So kind of notice that these swap places, if it's 60 degrees, your radian measure is going to have a denominator of 3. If it's 30 degree triangle, it's going to have a denominator of 6. Pi over 2, we already knew that, is 90 degrees. Okay, so we've got 120 degrees here. We already talked about how I've color coded them. So this is going to have, in radian measures, it's going to have a denominator of 3. It's going to be 2 pi over 3. So we went 1 pi over 3, now we're 2 pi over 3. 135 degrees is going to be 3 pi over 4. 150 degrees, 5 pi over 6. So remember how I showed you, these are all going to have the same denominators. 30 degree triangle in the first quadrant has the same denominator as a 30 degree triangle in the second quadrant. Same for 45 and 60. They're going to have the same denominator is going to carry out for your radians. Okay, so we've got 180 degrees, we know that's pi. 210 degrees, that's equal to 7 pi over 6. 235 degrees, 5 pi over 4. And 240 degrees, 4 pi over 3. 270, we already know, is 3 pi over 2. 300 degrees is 5 pi over 3. 315 will be 7 pi over 4. And 330 degrees will be 11 pi over 6. And then lastly, we get all the way around, we've gone 360 degrees or 2 pi. So you're going to need to memorize these. You need to know where they are, and eventually we're going to get into the triangles and finding the trig values. So we kind of introduced that in this lesson a little bit, but not too much. More importantly for this particular lesson, know what type of triangle it is, and know the angle and the radian, so the degree and the radian for it. Okay, so that's it for today. I know it's a lot of information that I threw out you here. It's going to be a lot of memorization, but we'll have plenty of time to go over questions in class. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.